Good morning, Keller Williams. How's it going? Happy Wednesday. It is the last Wednesday of July, if you can believe it, which means that means August is up next, which of course means Labor Day is right around the corner, and then Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. So before you know it, it's going to be 2022. So I hope you are ready, because we are fast tracking the second half of this year. My goodness, craziness. Hey, so you know what? It is the last Wednesday in July, which means summer, which then means summer camp. For those of you who have kids away at camp, I don't know about you, but I remember having to write letters home when I was at camp. And so I thought this morning we would visit my friend Ellen, who we haven't visited with in a while, and see what she has to say about kids writing home from camp. I'd show you some funny letters that kids write their parents while they're at summer camp. It's my segment. It's called Just Kidding. Janet from Ann Arbor, Michigan sent this in. Her kid wrote, hi, mama. Yesterday was awesome. We had a fire and more, but today was bad. I got water up my nose. I skinned my leg and I got bit by a donkey. Ow, come get me, please. Love your hurt daughter, Shay. <laughs> wow, the highlight of this girl's summer camp was a fire. <laughs> Yesterday was awesome. We had a fire and more. <laughs> Megan from Newport Beach, California. Dear Mom, I was forced to write this to eat. Love, Josh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it seems more like a, it's like a ransom note more than a... Uh... Sarah from Chicago, Illinois. Camp is not fun. I like nothing. I'm feeling sad. A funny thing happened. It was nothing. I can't wait for visiting day. Please send me you. <laughs> oh, my God. Must be donkeys at that camp, too. <laughs> Melissa from San Diego, California. Dear Mom, day five of camp is a lot better. The rash on my penis is gone. <laughs> and now I can run. <laughs> My friends hate when I say eggs, so I'm trying to stop saying it. Love, Josh. <laughs> All right, two questions. How often are you saying eggs that people have a problem with it? And how bad were days one through four? <laughs> oh, man. The rash on the penis is gone, so we can run now. If your kids write a note you think I should see, please send it to me. All righty. I don't know if you noticed, but what I noticed was the egg saying rash on the penis child and the I wrote this to eat, both from Josh. So was it the same Josh? Was it just a really bad week? Was it one week at one camp? Was it one week at another camp? I don't know, hopefully your experiences were better than some of those experiences. I don't know the camps I went to had donkeys. So I, th I guess I, I'm considering myself a, a lucky duck this morning. All righty. Hey, Kristen, how was your camp experience? Hi, Rick. Um, good morning, everybody. Oh, I do not want to be the spotlight. How do I change that view? Um, yeah, so I never went to a sleepaway camp. I was too attached to my mother <laughs> as a kid. So I went to day camp, if anything. No donkey, so. Oh, it looks like um, we have a. I was very quiet and shy. As What's that? Sorry, um, you were you were frozen for a bit. So uh, let's 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 jump right in and hit it. My internet is unstable. It said so. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. We can. We can. Go ahead. Okay. So I just wanted to share something that I I um, had happen this week. Um, an agent who may or may not be on this call. Um, uh, she has a listing. And um, it's a house that, you know, needs some repairs. And she was asking about an FHA loan that was, they had accepted the offer on this FHA loan. And I, of course, you know, talked to her about what the FHA appraisal is going to look like. The FHA appraisal is a little bit different. FHA loans in general are the same process, you know, <clears throat> but because it's a government funded loan and it's more likely, you know, they, it's a higher risk of, of default, you know, that's what they say. So um, they're very strict with their appraisal. So there can't be peeling paint. There's some basic stuff, you know, that, that you guys may or may paint, you know, health and safety issues that for 
for FHA would not pass an FHA appraisal. Um, and, and in this market, people tend to, I, I've seen anyway, that people are not, are kind of staying away from the FHA loans. They don't want to accept FHA, you know, mortgages for their clients. Um, but what I said to her was talk to the listing agents if, if it comes down to it and mention that they do have an FHA renovation loan, which is a perfect loan for a person who is FHA, you know, an FHA client, and they may not have the cash to put in a house that needs work or something that may not appraise. Um, they can look into an FHA 203k loan um, because it kind of, you know, it it makes um, it, it's it's a it's a loan where they can come in. And they have a before appraised value for the property. And then the HUD consultant will do an after, like after you do these renovations, um, they have an after appraised value. So you don't have to worry about an appraisal or the house not appraising. You kind of know what you're getting into um, up front, be, you know, doing the doing the um, the work to the house. So I just said, mention it to the listing agent. I said, and then have the client call me because I would be happy to talk to her about a 203K loan. Um, I do also speak to listing agents. I do that on a regular basis. So if you do run into some, you know, mortgage questions from the other side, I'm happy to talk to a listing agent. I literally had talked to one last night at nine o'clock. Um, so I just wanted to share that story with you um, because I think there's options out there and not every, you know, company or loan officer is, is sharing all of the options, you know, um, not to say that anybody's not doing that, but I just, you know, it didn't come up in a conversation. And I thought, this is a great house. I actually went to the house. I looked around. I wanted to see like, if there would, if there would be any red flags with the appraisal, um, the house is in great shape. It just needed some updates and maybe some, some safety issues that could be addressed with the 203k loan that would alleviate the, any worry about having an FHA you know, loan coming in to buy your property. So um, I'm going to put my information in the chat. Got, uh, feel free to call me if you have any questions. Um, and, you know, uh, let me know if you need anything. Very good. Thank you so much, Kristen. As always, we appreciate you and your time and talents. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty, moving forward with some uh, quick announcements. Today at one o'clock, don't forget, we do have our all agent business mastermind. And so funny thing, we had a great capper mastermind yesterday. I took two solid pages of notes in that capper mastermind. Uh, learning from each other is probably my favorite way to, uh, to learn new things. So thank you for everyone for sharing time and talents yesterday. Uh, today is our all agent business mastermind, which is open to every single person on this call. There are no production uh, requirements. Uh, so, so please do choose to plug into that at one o'clock. Interestingly enough, the all agent business mastermind, which is open to everyone, so it has the largest appeal, seems to have the smallest attendance. So plug into that, make a choice to, uh, to check in with your, with your colleagues today. Let's share ideas, solve uh, issues, and create new strategies to help you move forward. Today at one o'clock right here in this Zoom room. Tomorrow at one o'clock is our Rainmaker mastermind. So if you lead a team, uh, your, rain, your Rainmaker Mastermind is tomorrow at one o'clock. Uh, you might have seen an email from me yesterday. Tomorrow at 1230, just ahead of the Rainmaker Mastermind, is a, a, a meeting that I'm hosting right here in this Zoom room as well to give you new information and explain the new rules that the Department of Consumer Protection up in Hartford have now come out with about what you can call yourself. Whether you're a team or a solo agent, if you don't just call yourself your name, you need to be in that meeting tomorrow at 12:30 to know what those uh, what those new rules are. Uh, for many of you, that is going to require a change of branding. I am sorry to say that, but that is the that is what's going on with the with the state. Uh, you can't use a whole lot of words that a lot of you are using. Uh, we've gonna we're gonna have to shuffle some things around, and I'll give you what your options are and how that's all going to affect you. So again, unless you call yourself your name. If you have any other version of, of, uh, of, a, of a name that you use to market yourself and advertise, you need to be in that 1230 uh, session tomorrow to know what, uh, how that affects you and what the, uh, what the strategies to move that forward are going to be. So that's 1230 tomorrow, just ahead of the Rainmaker Mastermind. Rainmakers, you can then just hang out and, uh, and attend the one o'clock 
Rainmaker Mastermind. Uh, lastly, as an announcement, uh, Megacamp, as you know, we've been monitoring those registrations. And just before I left on vacation two weeks ago, we were at 50. When I came back, we were at 50. Uh, and as of today, we are at 50. So I'm not sure if you notice a trend there, but we seem to be stuck at 50, right? And so if you have questions about whether or not you should be registering for Megacamp, uh, there is, shouldn't be a question. Uh, it, it's, it's three days of, of um, awesome training. It's time you get to spend with Gary Keller, um, well worth the $119 or whatever the registrations cost. Uh, cost today. And if you don't do it today, it's just going to cost you 149 when you do it the week before. So jump on and get that taken care of today. Megacamp.kw.com. Silva Christoph, do me a favor and type that into the chat for me. Megacamp.kw.com. That's where you go to register. I appreciate that. So let's get take care of that today. I'd love to see us double that by Monday. So 50 more registrations by Monday. Uh, again, there's no reason not to. It's You get to do it from your couch or from the office. Uh, no traveling required because Megacamp is digital again this year. All righty. So a quick story and then my 18 things uh, for the morning. Uh, I was driving my daughter to the airport in Newark on Sunday uh, because she a couple of weeks ago decided that she was going to orchestrate a, uh, a trip with five friends. She's had these five friends. They're kind of her, 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 her best friends. She's known them for over a year and they're online friends. She's never actually met them in person, right? Brave new world. I don't know about you, but that's certainly not how I met people. And yet these are her five best friends. She's never met them. She, she, coordinated this whole trip. They were meeting down in Miami to spend uh, five or six days together um, down at the beach in Miami. Awesome, great, wonderful. We helped kind of uh, construct that with Airbnb and, and got everything all set. So I'm driving her to the airport and two interesting things happened from a parental perspective. The first thing was about halfway to the airport, she actually turned to me and said, you know, I just wanted to thank you for helping make this make sense right? Because we were the ones who prepaid for the, for the Airbnb and we were the ones who, who helped people out who couldn't quite make the airfare work uh, at that moment in time and, you know, getting paid back on the, on the tail end by, by a lot of her friends. And so she was recognizing, gee, thanks, we actually went out of your way to make this work. And so I thought, well, there's a win. But then it got even better. So we're having this financial conversation and my just now 19-year-old daughter turns to me and says, so, you know, dad, can you believe that my friends don't save half of what they earn? And I said, well, what do you mean, Lily? And she said, well, you know, the rule in our house is that you always put away half of what you earn. So when we get our paychecks, you know, when Noah and I get our paychecks and we put half in, the, in a savings account and we live off of the other half. That's been the rule in my house, by the way, since since the start of time, right? It's the rule, not just for the kids in the house, but for the adults in the house as well, right? You live on 50% and you save 50%. And so, and so uh, she said, you know, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I was having this money conversation with these friends the other day and they don't do that. And I said, well, honey, you know, not everyone has the same thoughts and ideas about, about money as, as everybody else. And she said, yeah, but you know what? The, the way I could go on this trip without even having to think about it is because I save 50% of my money. And it was a struggle for all of them because they don't do that. So over the last couple of weeks, this is the best part. Over the last couple of weeks, I have, I have pushed each one of them separately in separate conversations to go and open a new account. And every time they get paid to put 50% of their money in the new account and only live on the 50% that they, that they don't save. And I thought to myself, praise the Lord. I think, I think, I think my parenting has paid off. <laughs> For those of you who have raised children and think you're talking into the wind, please note every once in a while, something comes back and they were actually listening. And what was so cool was that she wasn't actually just listening and implementing herself. She was then recognizing how impactful that was for her and her life and the things she wanted to do and then teaching her friends, right? And so I continue to say to each of you, 
teach your kids, learn it yourself, teach your kids, have your kids teach their kids, have them teach their friends, because in a generation or so, we can change the way that wealth is distributed in this country if we continue to arm people with tools that help them be better and do better with money. So in honor of that, I wanted to spend uh, just three minutes with you, uh, giving you 18 things my dad was right about. Because on Sunday, I got to feel right. And so I wanted to share with you 18 things my dad was right about. Number one, your 30s, 40s, and 50s won't feel like your 30s, 40s, and 50s, because adults are just older children. Don't fear growing up. Look forward to it. Number two, good things and bad things will happen to both you and your friends. That's just a part of life. Recognize that the tragedies are rarely as bad as they seem. And even when they are, they just give us an opportunity to get stronger. Number three, everyone can make a huge difference. It's easy to feel small. So find ways that you can insert yourself to make a difference and change the world. Number four, first impressions aren't all they're cracked up to be. First impressions aren't all they're cracked up to be. Nothing seems normal, uh, everything seems normal from a distance. Be careful about fast judgment of people. It's the 10th, 20th, or even 50th impression of that person when you really start to understand who they are. Number five, big results come when you narrow your focus. Boy, Gary has said that to us a million times, hasn't he? Big comes from doing small well, right? That's Gary's version of that. So big results come when you narrow your focus. Concentrate your efforts on smaller and smaller areas and master those smaller areas and you'll watch things get bigger. Number six, love yourself. Become your own priority. Strive to be the very best you that you desire to be. Number seven, sometimes you have to just go for it. My change there is take out the word sometimes. Just go for it. People rarely get it right the first time, right? Actually, the people who succeed are the ones who just keep going for it, falling flat on their face and just stand up and say, okay, well, that's one way I did it that doesn't work. Let me go for it again and figure out a way that does work. Number eight, in order to get, you have to give. In order to get, you have to give. Remember, everything you do comes back around. Karma, baby. Number nine, not much is actually worth fighting about. Not much is actually worth fighting about. I kind of love that one. Take that, take that in your personal world, take that in your business world. We had a conversation in Ignite last night about the fact that this industry has, has made this weird turn where negotiations always seem to have to be contentious. And you know what? It's a whole lot simpler than that. There's no reason we have to be arguing with the other side. It's just, there's just no time for that, right? So let's just, let's just be kind to each other and move forward. Forgive much faster than you, than you kind of feel like you want to. Number 10, don't try to impress everyone. My version of that is don't try and impress anyone except yourself, right? Just be real with people instead. It's not about what they think. It's about relationship and connection. Number 11, keep having fun. Keep having fun. Guys, have fun every single day. Even if it feels like the, the sky is crashing down, just decide to laugh through it, right? Gets you through the other side much faster. Number 12, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Pick the five most important things to, that, are, that are important to you right now and focus on those. Let everything else go. We all spend way too much time focusing on way too many things. Number 13, little things stick with you. Little things stick with you. So pay attention to the little things. Figure out what it is you're missing, right? There's a version of that that's called stop and smell the roses, right? Stop and smell the roses. 
that might be more easy, it might be easy for, for Dan and April to do today. Stop and smell something in your wooded wonderland there, right? Notice the little things. Number 14, this is a hard one for some of us. Keep your opinions to yourself. Keep your opinions to yourself. Choose to be a sounding board for others instead of a stage director with a megaphone, right? What a, what a great piece of advice. Choose to be a sounding board instead of a stage director, right? So keep your opinions to yourself. Ask questions and receive instead of constantly barking the orders. Number 15, manage your time. Be careful not to confuse things that are urgent with things that are actually important, right? Prioritize, focus, manage that time. Number 16, manage your money. If you're struggling with that, please contact my daughter. I'll put her name and number in the, in the chat because she has some advice for you. <laughs> she's, giving out, she's giving out financial advice now. I'm so proud. Number 17, what you learn in school really does matter. And I wanna translate that one for you. That one to me doesn't really mean what we learned necessarily back in grade school, although all those things actually matter as well, right? The way I read that is keep learning. Make sure that you, you wake up to learn something new every single day, because all those things, all that learning, all that knowledge, all that information helps you to be a better version of you, right? So keep learning and recognize that it does matter. It's why you should be registering for Megacamp, because that's where you get the learning, just PS. And lastly, number 18, dreams will remain dreams forever if you don't take action. Dreams will remain dreams forever if you don't take action, right? So know what you want, make a plan, know how you're gonna get it, but then go ahead and do it, right? You've gotta implement, you've gotta implement. Guys, those are the 18 things that your dad told you that were absolutely right. Here's my bonus, want the bonus? I'll give you the bonus. The bonus, yeah, and Don's holding up the book. It's A Thousand Little Things Happy Successful People Do Differently by Mark and Angela Chernoff. That's where that came from. Here's my bonus for you. My bonus for you is save 50% of every single thing that you earn. It's Lily's advice to her friends. It's my advice to you. Figure out how to earn enough and live differently so that you can save 50% of everything you earn. It puts you on a path to wealth building far sooner. Good morning, Adonis. Good morning, Rick, man. Powerful stuff. Love it. All right, so today we're going to talk some Marty Miller stuff, entering and comparing offers inside of opportunities. Enjoy. Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66-Day Challenge 5.0, and today is day 39. So today we are still in opportunities, and I'm going to talk to you today about the ability to message either people on your team or people in your market center with regards to specific documents or opportunities that you may have. We call it folder-level messaging. And we're going to start by showcasing that inside of opportunities. So let's dive into opportunities. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to go into an active, in this case, a team opportunity. So we'll go in. And the first thing that you need to do in order to enable team messaging is make sure that the team members that you intend to message about this opportunity have been assigned to it. You can see right now I'm the only person assigned to this opportunity. But let's say my wife is also gonna be involved in this opportunity and there may be things that she's doing and things that I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and assign her this opportunity so that it shows up in her pipeline and also so that I have the ability to message her inside of the documents tab. So let's move over to documents, <clears throat> excuse me. And you'll see that on each one of these folders, I have the ability to add comments. So let's say we're under contract and I wanted to add a comment. 
maybe she's the one taking care of paperwork and um, I could leave a comment for her. In order for her to get a icon, a bell, a notification that she has received a notification uh, or a message, I need to at sign her, which is the, the at sign is right above number two. As soon as I click on that, you can see that Nicole pops up. So I can say, hey, Nicole, um, where are we on getting the uh, T47 back from the seller? And whatever it may be, right? So something that you need someone on your team to see the comments inside of command. So if I click on add reply, you'll see this message now shows up in the comments. In addition, we get a little comment blurb right here that shows there is an active comment and I can always click on it and see what that is. It also tells you who made the comment and on what day and at what time. So if I now log out of my account and log into my wife's account, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the other side. So first things first, when I come into her command, you'll see that she has a red dot next to her notification bell. And when we click on that, you can see Marty Miller has left a message for you in the under contract folder in the Mickey Mouse listing, right? So this is the name of the opportunity. And this is the folder that the message is in. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can see the actual message. So if I click on this, it'll actually open the opportunity to the documents tab and the communication box will actually check up. So I can now, as Nicole, tag me back and say, he said he's mailing it to us on Monday. Now, if I don't tag me in this case, I won't get a notification. It'll be an added comment, but I won't actually get the notification. So if I, my recommendation is if you're communicating with your team, always at sign whoever it is that you believe needs to see that comment. So we will add that reply. You can see now Nicole has replied today at 413. And if I log out of her account and back into mine, the same thing will happen. I will now have a notification <clears throat> showing her comment back to me. Click on the bell. There's my notification. He said he's mailing it to us. If I click on it, it'll open that opportunity. <clears throat> now we can see new message from Nicole. He said he's mailing it to us on Monday. In addition to messaging your team, you can also message members of your leadership team. So if you do the at sign, you can see, right, Lorraine is our compliance coordinator. I've got our MCA, assistant MCA, tech director, and broker all inside of this list of people that can be sent a message. So maybe a specific question about a specific document. Um, you know, be careful about doing this. You want to make sure that your leadership is actually, you know, recognizing these and responding to them as compared to sending them an email. Uh, but if you are using this system, I could just put, hey, Mary Atkins Bell, hey, Mary, uh, testing the notification system as part of the command 66 day challenge. And that way, Mary will get that notification now inside of her command. And so she can then reply back to it should she need to. So another way, typically the predominant way that I'm seeing this being used again is with teams. Um, if you are an individual agent, but you have a third party transaction coordinator that's has either a guest account or is a part of your team, you can at mention them as well, as long as they have been assigned to the opportunity. So that's really important. They need to be assigned to the opportunity. So that's it for today, guys. Just the ability to do your at mentions inside of your folder level messaging system um, and communicate back and forth between team members or agents and leadership. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. And as always, I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Good stuff. So tomorrow we'll talk more about entering and comparing offers inside of opportunities. But I hope you got something good out of this one. And we'll see you all later on and tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye, Sean, Alice, Debbie, other people I can't see right now. Bye-bye.